Hello and welcome back to WePC. Now every gamer at some point will have seen or even heard about Twitch.tv. It's the internet's most popular platform for live broadcasting. And for a good reason also, considering that Ninja in a single year got over 150 million hours watched. So in this video, we're gonna teach you all there is to know about how to start your own Twitch live streams. So live streaming can be done by anyone with a semi-decent internet connection, but there are a few other things that you will need. Twitch stardom is on the near horizon for you, but you will need to consider some hardware and software, and we will show you which of these you will need. Now, there are some technical specifications that you will need if you are wanting to live stream in 1080p 60 frames per second, for example. You'll your computer will need to be at a certain base level to do so. You're not going to need a massively beefy computer, even 7th and 8th gen CPUs will actually do. So you're not going to need a $2,000 PC for example. Now Twitch recommends you have 8GB of RAM, but we will be recommending at least 16GB, especially if you are going to be doing everything off a singular computer. To go along with this, you will need at least an upload of 35 megabits per second if you want to live stream in 1080p. If you do not have this, fear not, you can still live stream, but it will be in a lower quality. So let's create your Twitch account. Creating your very own Twitch account is free and doesn't take very long with the option to sign in via Facebook. Fill everything in about yourself and keep it professional as this is going to represent you and later your brand. Now you've created your own Twitch account, it is time to download your streaming software. Now there's a few options when it comes to streaming software. For example, you have the highly popular XSplit, OBS or even Streamlabs. Now all of these softwares effectively do the same thing. They can both live stream and they can both record. They also include everything you would expect such as layouts, video scenes, chroma keying and much more. Anything that you need for your live streaming capabilities, all of these programs will have. So now you have your Twitch account made, you have your live streaming software. It's now time to think about your audio. Now there's an age old saying that your audio is more important than your picture, and I wholeheartedly agree. If you have terrible sound, nobody will want to watch you. Your headset microphone may not cut the curve. A lot of professional Twitchers use XLR mics to get that absolutely maximum crispy sound. Now we're not telling you to go and invest hundreds and hundreds of pounds into a microphone at the very start of your Twitch journey. I mean, you could do that if you want to, but we wouldn't suggest it right now. For example, you can pick up a blue snowball microphone for 50 pounds, which is a very, very good microphone. Another thing to consider if you're going to use your face cam is a high definition webcam. Now there's two things to consider here. You can get a webcam, Logitech do some brilliant HD webcams, or you can get the Elgato Streamlink, which allows you to use your DSLR camera as your webcam. Now this is obviously at the higher end of the spectrum. Not everyone has a $2,000 DSLR hanging around, but if you do for some reason have one, you can use this as your input camera and it will provide you with an incredible picture. Now, if you don't have a particularly powerful computer, then fear not because the PS4 and the Xbox One both have their own respective live streaming apps. You simply download Twitch and you can stream straight from your game. If you have a webcam, you can also use that and use your microphone from your headset. As previously mentioned, it's not gonna be the greatest of quality, but if you're just live streaming because you want a few of your friends to watch you play, then this is probably a great option. Other game consoles such as the Nintendo Switch or PS3 will require you to have a capture card. If you don't know what a capture card is, then essentially it allows you to record and stream your gameplay from your console. One HDMI cable will go in here, which will go into your TV, and this one will go into your console. That will then link into your computer and you can live stream your gameplay. Now these are particularly very, very cheap depending on the one that you get. For example, this is a very old Elgato Capture Card HD, which only records in 1080p 30 frames per second. However, it's still pretty great. If you're not looking at live streaming in 60 frames per second, then this is a really great option as it costs about 50 to $60. If you're going to the higher end, then you may well want to get the Elgato integrated graphics card that goes into your computer and that allows you to record at 4K at 60 frames per second. As we previously mentioned, this is for the higher end of quality. So we don't expect you to go and splash all your money on this at the moment. But further on in your live streaming career, you may want to invest. We've talked about how to set up your Twitch account. We've got your software ready your webcam and your audio is also ready and you've decided your best option for capturing your gameplay. Let's start your stream. Firstly, install your software and then head over to Twitch. Click the create a dashboard and then go to the live tab on the dashboard. As previously mentioned, you are going to want to build this like a profile page for your channel. Add a title, category and a go live notification. This go live notification will pop up on people's mobile phones and on their email, so make it short and snappy. 
Now we need to configure the streaming software you choose to go with. So I'm using OBS, but you will find most streaming softwares is set up in a similar fashion. Before we get started, you're going to want to run your software as administrator, as it will grant permissions to capture your games, which just makes things generally easier for you. Navigate to the settings and navigate to your respective stream settings window. Sometimes this is also called broadcast settings. Under the stream type, select streaming services. And under the service header, you can select which streaming platform you wish to use. So in this case, we're going to pick Twitch. The next step is you're going to require your stream key which you can see a box for at the bottom of your settings. Head back onto twitch.tv, navigate to your dashboard just like before, but this time click on the tab labeled channel underneath the settings header. Right at the top of this page, you will see your primary Steam key. Copy this and head back over to your streaming software. Now back in your streaming software, you want to paste the stream key into the relevant field labeled stream key and select done or okay. Now if in this link between Twitch and your chosen streaming software, if you're happy with your stream layout, it is time to go live. Now it's time to load up the game you're going to live stream on Twitch. Go back into your live streaming software and add a game capture so that it appears in your streaming software. Click confirm and go live to, well, go live. And that is all there is to know about going live on Twitch. There are a few further advanced settings such as adding donations, stream layouts and notifications, but that's a topic for another video. If you would like to see that and for us to give you some more advanced Twitch tips, then leave it in the comment section down below and we'll definitely consider it. We do hope that this guide helped you and we are looking forward to seeing what your Twitch journey leads you to. If this video helped you, we would love if you could leave a like on the video, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and we'll see you in the next one.